right, uh, another one, of course, we'll take the papers in turn and then um, have the conversation around one or two of the topics. I have a nation newspaper, and above the nameplate, IPOB men gathering in Edo say police. IPOB men gathering in Edo say police. That's on page five. Troops kill 50 ISWAP terrorists in Damboa. Tinubu urges journalists to work with responsibility. And editors ask government to tackle insecurity. Now, below the nameplate, Zulum allocates 580 houses to IDPs. That's page 27. Jamb blames candidates for UTME hitches. That's the registration process. Now, details can be found on page 6. Police uncover AK-47 rifle production factory in Joss. Or Tom's security advisor's killers traced him to a restaurant. That's the uh, rider to that headline. Of course, or Tom's uh, security advisor was a retired assistant inspector general of police, Christopher, uh, the guy who was killed in a restaurant in Joss. Now, there are two uh, excerpts from uh, that uh, lead story. One is attributed to the police and then the other is to a suspect. According to the police, if you look at these weapons locally fabricated by the suspects, there is no difference from others imported. They use the same magazines. Now, a suspect is saying we have fabricated about 180 units in the last three years. We sell it for 80,000 naira each. I learned the production from my boss. Gunmen kill policemen, attack Oshun banks and stations, and uh, OPC men and residents resist. As a writer to that, Buhari's tweet sparks row between the federal government and Twitter. And then, with the writer, social media giant rolled suspicious. You can see the photographs there on the front page. Uh, apparently, some of the weapons that were seized and the suspects uh, with uh, Commissioner of Police Frank Mba uh, displaying one of the guns yesterday. And uh, right at the foot of the front page, Unilag Sachs Randy Lecturers. Uh, there were two lecturers uh, who were caught in um, a sex for great scandal captured in the BBC documentary. So two of them have been fired by the governing council of the institution. Unit just resumes Monday. That's page uh, 27. Adabu. Well, the Daily Trust here, we have uh, the following stories on the front page. Um, SIM linkage, telcos lose 11.8 million customers in three months. You get details of that on page 17. And on page 26, six months after Buhari's promise, no special salary yet for teachers. Uh, police bust uh, factory manufacturing AK-47, as you read in that, uh, the Nation newspaper on page 31, and uh, that's implied to state. And uh, the main story, the big story on the page, on the front uh, page of the Daily Trust is uh, IPOB, federal government experts accused Twitter of double standards. And the writers are, say Kanu others made worse comments. Ohaneze drugs Buhari to ICC. Let Biafra be so. Let Biafra be, that is, so the peace can reign. Northern Coalition says so. The onion producer suspends supply to Southeast. Then coming down to the bottom of the page, uh, media trust honors for to own staff for integrity, excellence, long service, details on page five, and the pictures are right there, where, you know, certificates are being presented to you know, deserving staff of the media trust. At the bottom of the page, on page 32, there is a story why generally acceptable constitution is difficult <coughs> in Nigeria, says Ganduji. And on page 10, Senate abolish, abol abolishes that is a uh, degree and HND dichotomy. They are now at power. Get details of that on page 10. And then on page 28, IPOP successionist gathering in Edo according to DIG. Now, these are the stories on the Daily Trust. My, my major concern here is uh, this busting of factory, this uh, rifle-making factory in, uh, in Joss. Look at the ingenuity, Kinsley, of Nigerians in this regard and trying to make things, you know, uh, as better, as even better than the ones that are fabricated outside, which we pay money, are hard-earned, 
you know, foreign exchange in order to get them into the country to use or for use by our military. And here we are today, you know, some of us doing this and they're even equal at the same part. At the same level with uh, you know the ones that are being produced outside. I mean, the ingenuity is much. Why do you want to use it negatively? Well, uh, there are a number of perspectives. One of which you have just raised now. Mm. Uh, CP Frank Kumba was on Good Morning Nigeria with us a couple of months ago, and he hinted at this when we were discussing the proliferation of, of small, small arms, arms yeah. and light weapons yes, and what yeah. needed to be done. Uh, and uh, that you say, look, there is some local production that is that is uh, that's going on. What is needed to be done is once you have happened upon talents of this nature, mm. the thing to do is not simply to uh, throw them into a correctional center or throw them into a detention. So to seek to understand the fundamentals of what they are doing and how they are doing it. And by the way, uh, people have always produced guns in Nigeria, yeah. uh, then guns and yeah. so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, blacksmiths were always involved in this, uh, in different parts of the country. In the East, I think it must have been around Oka area or so. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, people used to also produce their guns. It was just the effective range as well as, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as the, the capacity, that's to say whether it was a self-loading rifle or whether you had to put a cartridge after each shot. But the talent that has been displayed here to say that they are fabricating this kind of assault weapon uh, is something that needs uh, to, to, to be considered. Now, how can you upscale their skills in a formal sense? Uh, are these persons that you can uh, recruit into the DIC, that's Defense Industries Corporation? Uh, what else can be done with them? Uh, because if, if you say that, look, let's just arrest these persons, the risk is that you might not get all of them. Yeah. So the, the, the production might then go underground. Mm. So what is it that is required to be done to harness their skills, either by formal engagement or otherwise, or to be sure that the business, uh, there's not a business now because it's illegal, uh, <laughs> the activity is, is regulated. Mm. I think that, that's the critical thing. It's mm. once but, a talent but, like but, this is recognized. I, I yeah. think, curiously, even, even during the Civil War, if you, you can just cast your minds back, you know, the Bear Fronts at the time manufactured most of their weapons apart from the ones they get from outside. And the talents have been there, and Nigerians have been doing that. Now, the, 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 the worry is that why, why can the Nigerian state harness this intellectual you know, capacities of Nigerians right from onset to this time and moving into you know, the technological age? I mean, it's a question Nigerians or Nigerian state should answer because you have to really fish out these people, fish out these talents, fish out these Nigerians, and then make the best use of them for the benefit of this country. They are the ones that move outside Nigeria and make names out there. That's right, that's right. There's no, no, no question about that. Now, if they say they have produced about 180 units, of course, we'll expect the police authorities to find out to whom those uh, yeah. 180 units were yeah. sold. How do they get their ammunition? Now, this is the uh, firearm they are getting in the first instance. What about their, uh, their ammunition? So the, the, the key thing is that where they've busted this, where are the other locations mm -hmm. where these things have been produced mm -hmm. so that they can place a lead on them and, and not just simply say, look, you guys are crooks, you are criminals. Now we take you to the nearest uh, correctional uh, facility and the talents begin to waste there. Uh, as we have said, the key thing is that we are recognized. It's like some of these uh, Yahoo Yahoo boys. Yeah. Some yeah. of these Yahoo Yahoo boys. It's not just sufficient to say, oh, these guys uh, are doing this. How do you redirect uh, they are right now criminal talents into more productive ends in the ICT age. ICT age. I, I, we, we have said on Good Morning Nigeria in the past that some countries, including Switzerland, have from time to time organized the hacking competitions. They say they design a system and then you invite the hackers to come and test that particular system. Well, that's, uh, that's, that, that, that's it, but um, I think uh, we need to really do something about that. And you know one thing, Kinsley, even outside Nigeria, even the Yahubas who are captured or rather arrested outside Nigeria, they have been, you know, a sort of, uh, their talents have been tapped before they are sent to correctional centers. Intelligence has it on good records that most of these Nigerians or Yahubas who are captured outside in this uh, fraud are being used as such in trying to make a... Uh, or improve the technological standing of these countries where they operated before they have been sent to jail. Yes, but all sir. the same, we need to do something about the case. Absolutely. There's a story about uh, two Unilag lecturers who have been fired by the governing council of the institution. 
uh, this is sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. uh, two of them were involved. One of them is said to be a pastor. Their names, of course, you can find in greater detail on page five of, of the paper. They were first suspended when the BBC documentary was aired sometime in 2019. Okay. And now the governing council has taken a decision after evaluating the report of the university's uh, committee that was set up uh, to investigate the allegations. And so they have now been uh, uh, dismissed from the services of, uh, of the institution. And this is again another warning sign, uh, a signal to university lecturers, uh, wherever they might be, uh, whether in polytechnics, colleges of education, mm -hmm. or universities. There was a clear case of a, a professor at uh, Abafemi Awalawa University uh, who's uh, recorded audio message soliciting uh, uh, sexual favors from a female MBA candidate. <laughs> uh, you know, of course, he was not only dismissed from uh, uh, the services of uh, OAU at Ileife, he also was jailed for two years uh, in that particular instance. And there are many more uh, who, of course, are under the radar now, but once you get caught, there's no uh, hiding place. And I would think that our, our daughters and sisters and, uh, and uh, aunties, or women generally, uh, at whatever level, whether diploma, certificate, uh, first degree, uh, postgraduate or doctorate, uh, do not and should not, and uh, of course, uh, have no business facing uh, any sexual uh, harassment from any lecturer. And and that, 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 that also creates fear, maybe fear among the, 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 the female students now, uh, yearning to go into the university in order to read and study this course or that one. A lot of them have been expressing fear about this. It said that their own, you know, talents are not going to be really, um, you know, harnessed or allowed to really flourish as they want to. And I think the lecturers in this regard need to sit up. And the authorities are doing better, really, because they don't really, you know, live an inch in this regard. Well, the, the school authorities, as I said, they are all uh, waking up to this re realization that, uh, I mean, the institutions of higher learning uh, shouldn't be uh, a playground for, for rounding lecturers. No. Uh, and uh, the female students should feel confident uh, to get on with their academic programs and be satisfied that at the end of the day, the grades that they get are the grades that they truly deserve on account of their academic performance. Yeah. But one point, uh, and I think that this is also very critical, because we'll try to raise it uh, sometime in the past, there seems to be no uh, sufficient advocacy by university uh, uh, female lecturers against this because in most cases it is the, the female students who get pressured and then of course make a disclosure but we, are not, we don't appear to hear a great deal because it, it is said that there is a conspiracy of silence mm -hmm. amongst university lecturers particularly the male some of them who get uh, involved in this that there's the usual conspiracy of silence that if you uh, threaten uh, a female student uh, and then the female student goes to report to another lecturer, the lecturer of course might then gang up to uh, to victimize you because of course uh, they, they know uh, 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 those amongst them who are into this uh, kind of uh, unsavory uh, uh, behavior. But where are the female lecturers to say look can female students go to female lecturers to come Explain to them and let female lecturers rise up on their own. Let us hear their voices. And so also want to hear the voices of the SEUGs too, the That's student right. union government, because right. in trying to put across their own cases in whatever form from whichever angle, I think uh, this one should be a topic, a very big agenda for them to pursue and even make a, you know, a protest against them because it's really eating deep into their educational system. Uh, yeah, 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 but before we go, yeah. you know, again, on, um, on Monday, you and I were on set. Yeah. We were bemoaning the senseless uh, killing of uh, Ahmed Gulak, mm -hmm. who at some point was political advisor to President Goodluck Jonathan, he was an APC chieftain. He was murdered in Oweri, uh, Imo State. Now, another senseless killing of a security advisor to uh, Governor Otom of, of Benue. This is a retired assistant inspector general of police. Mm -hmm. Uh, according to the account here, the uh, killers traced him to a restaurant mm. uh, where they shot him several times in the chest. So again, just another senseless killing. Uh, we can't just be dealing with this kind of stories. Uh, there was also the story about the uh, former judge, uh, Stanley uh, Naji, who was also murdered uh, in Enugu, the capital of uh, Enugu State. Uh, we think that uh, these incidents, of course, uh, have to... Uh, at some point uh, be, be considered much more seriously. We cannot be attributing them to so-called unknown gunmen. 
And you know, this is how it spreads, and that's how we let go Boko Haram, we let go the bandits and the, and the kidnappers and the rest of them. Before we know it, it now becomes more or less like a negative norm now. And all over the place, people are being killed unnecessarily and senselessly. Oh, well, Nigeria, here we are. The authorities need to really do something about this and wake up to the challenge so that people will be much safer. You're watching Good Morning Nigeria. We'll now take a break. We'll be back off Dr. Uh, Osage Henry for being part of the discussion this morning. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, a very big thank you, too, for you out there for coming along all this while. It's been a pleasure to have you. I hope you are going to come along with us uh, tomorrow uh, for Good